Well, heroin has been around for more than a century, but the abuse of it has exploded in the past 20 years. What changed in this country to make that happen? That's the subject of the fourth part of our series this week, Drugged. The United States is experiencing the worst opioid crisis in history, but it's not the first time this has happened. Heroin was first created in 1874 by scientists looking for a less addictive alternative to morphine. It was later marketed by the Bayer Pharmaceutical Company as a cough suppressant. By the turn of the century, heroin was being sold over the counter in drugstores across America. Within a short period, the inevitable happened. People looking for pain relief became drug addicts. Families collapsed. Overdoses spiked. In 1914, Congress passed the Harrison Narcotics Tax Act. It was signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson. The act threatened jail time for doctors who gave opioids to addicts. And for a time, this law controlled the problem. That was before OxyContin. The regulatory framework that worked a century ago isn't adequate to address the threat of prescription painkillers. Thanks to changes in attitude and law, a government that once acted to protect its citizens from narcotics now subsidizes addiction, bankrolling synthetic heroin through Medicaid and the VA. Drug companies have made billions, sending a portion of those profits to the politicians who've allowed it to happen. Meanwhile, drug overdoses have overtaken car accidents as the leading cause of death for young people in many states. The life expectancy of huge parts of our middle class has declined. That's never happened before in American history. Some have argued that the real problem here is demand. Americans want drugs, and you can't blame that on the suppliers, whether they're Mexican cartels or legal drug companies like Purdue Pharma. But keep in mind that people who buy opioids don't function like normal consumers. Opioids are physically addictive. They challenge the notion of free will. Addicts aren't choosing to use. They simply can't stop. A century ago, Congress saved lives by clamping down on the supply of opiates. It worked and there's evidence it could work again. Dr. Gabor Mate is the co-founder of Compassion for Addiction. He says the culprit in the question of opioid addiction isn't the drug companies or Congress, but instead it is the system itself. It's capitalism. Dr. Mate joins us tonight. Uh, doctor, thanks a lot for coming on. So we're doing a series for a week on this question. I want to get at least one night with an alternative voice in here because I want to remain open-minded. And as I understand it, your contention is that drugs and alcohol, even heroin, are not inherently addictive, but they only become a problem because of the, the society in which they're used? No, that's not exactly what I say, uh, but thank you for having me, first of all, and thanks of for course. doing this series. What I'm saying is that uh, all drug use, and particularly opiate drug use, is about people's soothing pain. These are powerful painkillers. And as a palliative care physician, for example, I was very happy to prescribe opiates to people as a way of uh, easing their suffering. Yes. But these drugs don't only soothe physical pain, they also soothe emotional pain. And what I'm saying about addictions of all kinds is that they're rooted, first of all, in emotional pain and particularly in trauma. And so the question is, what conditions traumatize people? And what conditions traumatize people are family violence, multi-generational trauma history, uh, abusive situations in childhood, but also extraordinary stress on the parents, which leaves the children without emotional support. And as a result of what's happening in our society right now, both in your country, the U.S., and my country, Canada, a lot more people are getting addicted. So heroin use, as you know, in your country, has gone up fivefold in the last 10 years. Yes, and I, I, and I think it's not some of what you're saying of, is, it's, is not, true. It's not, it's, not because, it's not because the drugs are, no, it's not because the drugs are inherently addictive, but because so much more people are in pain. That's my point. I, l l let me ask you this question, however. If you flood a community mm -hmm. with a physically addictive substance, and opioids, I don't think anyone disputes, are physically addictive, as is alcohol, as you know, then you're more likely to have a higher percentage of them become addicted, which is to say, if heroin or its synthetic substitutes are really cheap, why wouldn't you have more heroin addicts? Doesn't that make sense? Well, as an American judge said very astutely that you can no, no more repeal the law of supply demand than you can repeal the law of gravity. The question is why are so many people in so much emotional pain that they gravitate towards those solutions? And not just, uh, not just drugs, by the way, but also alcohol. Uh, this For is sure. killing people as well. Cigarettes, cigarettes are killing people much more lethally, by the way, than the opiates are. 
So people are addicted to gambling, to shopping, to eating, to sex, there's obesity, there's diabetes. These are all addictive patterns rooted in emotional pain and trauma. And if we want to deal with the question of addiction, we have to ask, what is it that's traumatizing so many people? Now last night in your very excellent series, you talked about uh, uh, was it the night before about a county in Kentucky, one of the poorest counties in that state where there's a lot of opiate addiction. Don't you think the poverty and the loss of jobs and the loss of hope and the loss of connection and the destruction of communities has a lot to do with why people of are in pain? Of course I do. Of course I do. And it's, so, and it's, so, self, it's self evident that that's true. I guess here's the point that I would dispute that you just yeah. made. And I think a lot of what you said is true. But not all addictions are the okay. same in their effects, and there's a weird kind of relativism that would argue they are. So smoking is clearly bad for your health, but it doesn't cause you to neglect your children or lose your job or beat your wife, whereas other kinds of addictions do. And so if we no, they can't... Don't. No, no, they don't. Well, of course, a heroin no, is, is, a, is a threat to your, an imminent threat to your life. It can make you incapable of going to work. Of course it does. No, and actually, so, in Vancouver, let me tell you a fact. Uh, in international studies in, in Germany, in Switzerland, uh, in the UK, and in Canada, we've actually had clinics that prescribe heroin to confirmed addicts. They hold on jobs. They're good with their families. Much, and they don't break the law. So that what creates the problem with heroin addiction is mostly the arbitrary laws that say that it's not okay to use heroin, but it's okay to kill yourself with cigarettes. And by the way, alcohol, as you know, causes a lot of violence, much more than heroin does. Well, you're not going to hear me defending so I'm alcohol. Not here to you're not going to hear me defending alcohol so, so ever. But I, I think that's just, there's a lot wrong, I think, with that comparison. But unfortunately, we're out of time. But I appreciate your bringing up the topic because I think it's more complex than a lot of us can see. Doctor, thanks for coming on tonight.